As the year moves on, it's East Africa's turn to host another great event. Vultures circle above the Great Plains, spiralling upwards in thermals of hot air. Her broad wings ride the air for hours as she searches for the dead or done for. Every feather reacts to the tiniest breath of air, adjusting its angle to perfect the vulture's flight. She splays her wingtip feathers to reduce drag. uses her tail to steer. She is here for one thing only. The greatest mass movement of mammals on the planet. By August, Half a million wildebeest cross the Serengeti Plains and arrive in Kenya's Masai Mara. And with perfect timing, their scavengers unerringly follow. The vulture watches the herds looking for signs of weakness. She also studies the wildebeest's predators. But in the high-stakes world of the African bush, the watched also do the watching. There is an uneasy alliance between vultures and lions, as both spy on one another to find fresh meat. But today, the vulture won't need the lion's help. torrential waters of the Mara River are about to present an opportunity that happens just once a year. The vulture simply has to keep her wits about her. The wildebeest must cross the river to reach their breeding grounds on the short grass plains. It's the most dangerous time of their lives. just needs one more piece of the puzzle. The crocs have waited a year for this moment. Their prey doesn't suspect a thing.
vultures simply fly downstream, where the bodies are duly delivered. There's no rest for the wicked. Now the arguing begins. Outnumbered, a marabou stork bides his time. Eventually, everyone gets their fill. In a few days, they will follow the herd south and be gone. Just a little further north lies the Great Rift Valley home to one of the most graceful birds in the world. The lesser flamingo is a restless traveler, constantly searching for the perfect lake. Today, most of the world's population have chosen Lake Bagoria in northern Kenya. This is one of the greatest gatherings ever seen. A total of two million birds. They fringe the lake with a ribbon of pink. But this beauty is deceptive. Here, volcanic springs poison the tranquil waters. They create a caustic brew, killing most forms of water life. However, the same alkaline conditions allow a special algae to flourish. And it's the flamingo's only food. Their curved bills and long necks are designed to extract it from the lake. The bill acts as a sieve filtering the algae from the water. The flamingos appear as if by magic whenever the algae bloom. For a brief time, among these steaming vents, they find their Shangri-La. But there is trouble in paradise the African fish eagle. No fish survive in this toxic lake, so it hunts flamingos instead. flushes its prey. In the air, weaker birds are easier to spot. is found.
For the survivors, peace briefly returns. But flamingos never really stop traveling. Their life is a continual quest for the perfect lake. On the other side of the world, in the heart of South America, lies the vast Amazon jungle. It's home to yet more colorful travelers. Like flamingos, scarlet macaws are always on the move. But their seasonal journeys are governed by the fruiting of rainforest trees. But they have a problem. In the dry season, fruit is less available, and the alternative food is often full of poisons. They need to find a cure for the indigestion they get from their less than perfect diet. The secret remedy can be found alongside the river. But others have got here first. Newly parrots descend in droves, seeking the same popular cure. Their presence is good news to the scarlet and green macaws. It means that there are no predators around. But if the coast is clear, the macaws expect to have the place to themselves, and mealies know their place in the pecking order. Like the other parrots, the macaws are here for one thing only. Mud. But this is no ordinary mud. It's one that neutralizes the poisons in their rainforest diet. The clay not only settles their stomachs, it provides them with the nutrients missing from their food. Macaws are argumentative birds, and the best spots are keenly fought over. But they are surprisingly nervous too, especially when some unwelcome visitors arrive. Spider monkeys. They are hardly a danger, but their unruly antics put the birds on edge. It's now the monkey's turn to raid the jungle medicine chest. And the macaws just travel on. As the summer ends in North America, some bald eagles stop over in British Columbia before beginning their long journey south again. Like all birds, they have an unerring ability to be in the right place at the right time.
young eagles learn these tricks of survival by following the adults. An older eagle has seen it all before. He knows the exact time that salmon arrive from the ocean to breed. It's a skill he shares with bears. It's wise to be cautious. Grizzly bears don't like sharing their meals. young eagle also holds back, ready to watch and learn. But the salmon are a challenge, even for bears. They are chum salmon, up to three feet long and among the most aggressive of their kind. Their hooked jaws and teeth are designed for fighting rivals. With fish of this size and ferocity, it's best to let the bears do the hard work. must sneak closer to the action for any chance of a meal. Stealing from the bears would be asking for trouble. But with so much food around, the bears can afford to be choosy, taking a bite and moving on. At the peak of the salmon run, catching fish is soon just a game. It's time for the eagle to make his move. But he still must be cautious. Grizzlies are notoriously bad-tempered. He must eat as quickly as he can before the bears notice. It doesn't take them long. He'll eat his fill here, playing dare with the bears, before heading south as the fall takes hold. In Europe, 
autumn triggers a similar mass movement of birds. Brent geese, having left their breeding sites in the Arctic, head south to warmer climes. The birds fly with an extended family of aunts, uncles and other relatives. By sharing the decision-making, they make better choices, such as how to avoid gathering storms. miles from Arctic Russia, this family's travels are nearly over. The coastal marshes around Mont Saint-Michel in northern France are where they will make their home. will stay throughout the winter, only returning to the Arctic in the spring. Some overwintering birds have more metropolitan tastes. As winter beckons, 10 million starlings from Northern Europe converge on a few favored spots in the center of Rome. Here they find warmth and relatively few predators. Their evening murmurations create nature's greatest aerial display. A favourite roost is an ancient cemetery in the heart of the city. Two million converge on this one prime location alone. But such an astonishing gathering can hardly be ignored. The peregrine falcon, looking for his evening meal. It won't be easy. 
He's hunting the world's best aerial flying team. Their rapid movements and mesmeric waves confuse the peregrine, stopping him locking on to a single target. To achieve such defensive synchrony, each starling flies in formation with seven of his nearest neighbors. They move as one, with reflexes ten times faster than any human fighter pilot. Despite the peregrine's best efforts, he has been outmaneuvered and outperformed. The tables turn. A squadron of several thousand birds chase the peregrine away. The starlings can finally come home to roost. Elsewhere in Italy, the southerly migration of common cranes have taken some over Venice. Different families take different routes. Each follows the path taken by their parents before them. Venice was once an area of marshland where migrating cranes could rest and feed. The passage of time has seen many changes, but still these traditional routes endure. take their new family across the Mediterranean to spend the winter in the welcoming warmth of North Africa. Back in North America, snow geese have also felt the cold winds blowing and start to head south. Those taking the eastern route pass through another of the world's great cities. <laughs> 
Despite New York's immense human population, the city is a busy crossroads for traveling birds. Over 250 different species migrate through each year. Like the rock formations of Monument Valley, the buildings create uplifts of air, helping speed their journey. are ever adaptable. By passing on new knowledge to their families, they have learned to survive in a world transformed by human hand. The geese leave New York behind. The welcoming warmth of the deep south beckons. As the year draws to an end, all the birds stop traveling. Japanese cranes celebrate the change as they gather in the marshes of Hokkaido in Japan. Their population was once reduced to just 25 birds. Now, they number well over a thousand. Gifts of fish left out by local people have helped them thrive once more. But it's not all Zen serenity. In winter, white-tailed eagles gather here too. They are notorious bird hunters. Faced with the danger, the cranes fearlessly fight back. They offer quite a challenge. They are the largest cranes in the world, 